So, I have in here a virtual GPS device, and it's playing back a road trip from Seattle to Boston. So I grew up in Boston, which is the other end of I-90. Seattle is the west coast end of I-90. So I, I've lived at both ends of I-90. And I've played back a trip, or I've recorded a trip, going from one end to the other. Now, that's, I do that because having a location demo when you're not moving is really not very interesting. I could do it and tell you it's real, but maybe you wouldn't believe me. So, first thing I want to show you, this is a feature in Windows 7. It's the weather gadget. You're probably all very familiar with the weather gadget from Windows Vista. And you boot up your brand new Vista PC and it shows you the weather for Redmond, Washington. 90% of the time, if it's not July or August, it's going to be cloudy. Great. But then you have to go in and change it yourself. Well, Windows 7, as I said, is location aware. And as part of that, the weather gadget is location aware. So what it's doing right here in automatic mode is updating to show me the weather of my current location. Now I'm going to drag another gadget onto the desktop. This gadget is our location sample. It's actually part of the Windows SDK. So you also have access to the code for this. And what we do here is host a virtual earth control. It's getting a little sticky. We host a virtual earth map control in, the in, a, in a JScript gadget. And uh, as we go across our cross-country trip, the push pin is updated to my current location. And you can see correspondingly the get weather gadget is updating to the weather for the location where the push pin is. So this is all live running Windows code today. The only thing that I've tweaked is the weather gadget. It's been slightly modified for demo purposes, but I do assure you that in Windows 7 it is location enabled. So let's get into some architecture. I'm going to start at the very bottom here with our sensor device. So typically you'll have a device, whether it's again a physical device or a logical device. And that comes with a corresponding driver stack. Now, we are using the user mode driver stack, which means it's very easy to go build drivers, to debug drivers, and generally to write them. You don't have to have two machines to do kernel debugging and worry about blue screens. It's much, much easier to go write a user mode driver. Now, within the user mode driver, we actually give you a component we call the sensor class extension. Sensor class extension handles the bulk of the communication to the upper layers of the platform and abstracts out a very simple COM interface that a driver developer can implement that allows them to expose which sensors they have on their hardware, as well as the properties that that sensor supports, and as well as all the different data fields that are associated with that. There are events and other things. I'll talk about those later. Now, one thing I will note, you can have multiple sensors in a single device. So, for example, you could have a light sensor, an accelerometer, and some touch sensors all in a single device with a single driver, but they get exposed individually up to the application. So I mentioned on the last slide that we have uh, access control. So the user's in charge of which sensors are enabled and when. This is done through our location and other sensors control panel. If any of you have installed the Windows 7 build already and poked around in the control panel, you might have come across this. It probably was empty. Uh, but once you have sensors in there, you can actually go and they're all shown and you can enable them uh, for everybody on the system or individually for different users. And this is all built into the platform. So again, as an application developer or a driver developer, you don't have to worry about access control. We make it very easy. And then on top here, we have the API. So the API inter interfaces with our control panel, interfaces with the drivers, all the different sensor devices, and allows the applications to go and, and enumerate, to query, and get data from all these different devices. Now, I said location API was built on top of the sensor API. And that is true here. So in this diagram, location API, we have a COM API, which is iDispatch compatible. Those are built on top of our sensor API. And those allow us to talk to all location sensors included in the PC. And now we can access these from gadgets or scriptable applications or any native or managed code, native or managed code as well. Let me go back here to my gadgets. I'm going to put the map, the, uh, map gadget back on. Let's zoom it out. There we are. Should be somewhere over here. Uh, 
Now I'm going to go to the control panel. So if I just type in sensor into the search box, location and other sensors comes right up top. So I can click on this. Here's our control panel. So I have two different devices plugged in right now. One is that virtual GPS giving me my cross country path. The other one is for the little sensor dev kit, which I'm going to talk about later. So you can see my virtual GPS is enabled. So if I go here and I uncheck the box and hit apply, that sensor is now completely disabled. And the location applications I showed you earlier cannot get any location data. That sensor is locked down. If I want to go do this uh, on a per user level, I can go change user settings. And then I can enable it individually for different users on the machine. So I'll enable it for my account here, but not system services or any other accounts. So if I hit OK, then you see it's enabled with limited access. So this is the main privacy controls that we have in the platform. And I will show you the enable dialog in my next demo. What LiDAR UI is. So let me go back and get rid of my control panel and my map gadget. So I have up here an ambient light sensor. It's integrated onto this little hardware board. And I'm going to put this face down on the desk so it simulates very dark. Now I'm going to launch the MSDN Reader application. So you may be familiar with the Reader SDK available on MSDN. Uh, this is for building really nice readers. Uh, this is just a sample here. It's not actually a live one. And what we've got is ooh, there's a fly buzzing around. Uh, so we have our nice our LiDAR application here. And this is built on WPF. So I said that the rest of the 80% of you in the room that aren't C++ developers, here's my solution for you. This is a WPF application using an ambient light sensor live on Windows 7 on the pre-beta build that you get to take home today. So you'll notice that nothing's currently happening. Well, I didn't actually enable the sensor. So first thing I need to do is actually enable the sensor. And if this is working right, it's supposed to prompt me. Of course it's not. And in retrospect, I know why it's not, because I already did it once this morning. So I'm going to go pretend that I had the enable dialog come up as it did in my picture and enable this dialog. And then I'm going to go back and launch my reader again. So now it's actually a lot smaller. This is kind of my normal indoor font. Right? You build your application today, 12-point font, no problem. Very easy to read. I can sit here all day and read this. Not a problem at all. But now when I go outside, sit on the beach, I can't see anything here. So I'm actually going to take my light sensor and hold it up to these bright lights shining in my face. And you can see how the UI dynamically adjusts to account for that. Right? So the, the zoom increases. The font size increases. And when you've got glare on your display, this is a lot easier to go and see and go and read than it is when it's like this. Now, if you don't believe me, because there's no glare on the display here, let me show you a picture. There you go. So I went out to the beach and I took pictures of my laptop display with my LiDAR UI and without my LiDAR UI. And you can see the difference. You know, it's not perfect, but there is a marked difference in readability from the image on the right to the image on the left. Now we've also taken a couple other LiDAR concepts incorporated into the right demo. Number one, we've changed the contrast. You notice it's more black and white, it's more contrasty. By doing this, the eye is better e is, is the eye is able to easily, more easily depict differences and contrast, sorry, um, than it is via color. So if you look at the chart, for example, that uh, diagram in the upper right corner, on the left side it's in color. It's really muddied. It's hard to make out the, dis the differences between each of the boxes. But on the right, with that high contrast mode, it's a lot easier to go and see what's trying to be presented.